Isn't that the weirdest statue ever? Come on, Diego, get it together. We need some jokes. I totally get it, man. After so many years trying to come up with them, you end up slipping over. Leave some comments with some jokes, man. Jaime's saying he'd rather buy the essential phone over drinks. Yeah, I don't think so. We all know how much he loves Fridays. Fine, fine, agreed. <laughs> Recap is really awesome. If you can't produce six videos a week, please, Jaime, skip the weekdays, not the recap. I cannot tell you how much I love this video, but fun fact, the recap was not my idea. It was actually Brandon's years ago, and I thank him for that. That was an awesome idea indeed. That's right, it's that time of the week. I am Jaime Rivera. This is Pocket Now from Berlin. This is the Pocket Now Daily Recap for last week, your comments. So on Monday, the topic was the Samsung Galaxy Note 9, the fact that it had already sold in pre-orders more than the Note 8, more than the S9. Wait, no, less than the Note 8, but more than the S9. And I asked you what you thought. We had 559 comments. Probably not the best idea to start a title with Note 9 smokes. Dude, you had 348 likes on that, but uh, yeah, it's just, you know, it's, it's a figure of speech in the United States, very common, but I totally get it. The reason outsold the S9 is because of Fortnite bundle. Oh, come on, no. It, particularly with the way that uh, the whole exclusive went out, I know that that wasn't the reason it sold. I feel that the S9 and S9 Plus were probably not necessarily that much better than the Note 8, and given the added value proposition of the Note 8 and the fact that so many people stayed away from the Note 7, uh, it made it a whole big reason to invest on the Note 8 and be like, you know what, I'll just wait for the next Note. I think that's what happened. Galaxy Note 9 is a great phone, but the fact that the S10 is coming up with significant changes damages Note 9 sales. Yes, that could be the case. The problem is these are still just rumors. We don't know exactly what to expect here, particularly with all the rumors of a flexible Galaxy and stuff like that. We actually wonder what the future of the Galaxy S line will be. So on Tuesday, the topic was the iPhone XS or XS, and you can start with your jokes about that. We asked, uh, what do you think about the rumored features, the fact that it could now go horizontal with the UI, that it will support the Apple Pencil, pre-orders on September 14th, I asked you what you thought. We had 348 comments. These are interesting things, but $700 is max. Price is what I want to know most. Uh, yes and no. Uh, the problem is iPhones have already proven that regardless of the price tag, people will still buy them. I consider that to be disappointing, but apparently that's the way the market behaves. Apple does its own thing in their own way. Faster wireless charging will help it a lot, though I really do hope it'll be revealed earlier. I want to upgrade before October begins. It all depends. I mean, we've heard rumors that Cupertino is gonna push back the launch of the iPhone, the, the, the 9 model, the one in the middle, and then launch the first ones first. Apple has been experimenting with launches so much, and you know what the problem is? Uh, again, the market continues to prove that regardless of what Apple does, they will still buy the phones. It, the iPhone 5C was probably the last exception. And then ever since then, people will still make frenzies over it. I don't get it, but it's the way it is. By the way, don't say that I'm an iPhone hater. I use an iPhone 10 as well. I wish iPhone's charging speed would be as fast as its price hikes. <laughs> Oh my God, agreed, definitely. Yes, uh, wireless charging, I find it disappointing to only be a feature that Samsung phones have. And don't bear in mind, it's not like if it's that much faster than typical wireless charging, but still, yes, we are moving in that direction and we wonder what's taken companies so long. Then on Wednesday, the topic was triple cameras. We have companies like Oppo, like Huawei, investing in this technology. We heard the rumors that the Galaxy S10 would also bring this. And I asked you, if you had three cameras on your phone, what would you prefer them to do? We had 413 comments. S10 or S Plus should have a normal, regular camera, a telephoto with 6x optical zoom, a wide angle camera. Yeah, the case of that telephoto might be difficult because, well, you know, optics and distance require a lot of glass. I don't think that's gonna be the case, but definitely that wide the telephoto and the normal, those make a lot of sense. I know this sounds crazy, Jaime, but how about just one damn good camera? I know this sounds crazy, Jay Francisco, but the thing about it is it's sadly, if you wanna keep a phone slim and you wanna add functionality, more lenses seem to be the way to go. Nobody's gonna be carrying like portable lenses. There's a market for that, but people find them annoying as well. So I feel that more cameras is probably the best solution. 
Three cameras, dual aperture S9 Plus, no nine, wide angle and telephoto, crazy enough? No, definitely not crazy enough. The question is if companies are gonna do this. I feel that the wide angle should be the best approach, uh, but then again, Huawei has shown us that it can do three cameras in a really awesome way with monochrome, uh, and this d blend of uh, you know the telephoto and hybrid, which I find to be genius. We'll see. Then on Thursday, the topic was the Mission Impossible Pixel 3 XL shipments being stolen. I asked you what you're looking forward to most of what do you think about this whole debacle that has happened. We had 612 comments. The person is wearing a ring. In Canada, that is an engineering ring. So the person is probably an engineer. So very likely it is real. You know, the biggest problem with this whole Mission Impossible thing and what's happened in Canada is that, again, people that will pay $2,000 to buy a stolen Pixel 2XL, 3XL, sorry, 3XL, will actually know what they're buying into. And so I really doubt that these people would just buy it to just use it on the Metro. I know that these are, you know, people would be like, hey, I've got the new Pixel. So that's the reason why the leaks for me are weird. Google Pixel 3XL, the ugliest flagship smartphone in 2018. Yes, definitely the ugliest. I'm really hoping this is not the case, but I could be wrong. I have a question. Who has a better unibrow, Anthony Davis or the Pixel 3XL? Oh my God. I wish you guys ever saw a photo of my older brother in high school because that guy would win like the crown for the best unibrow, but then the Pixel 3 XL takes a very short second. And then finally, Friday, the topic was once again the Google Pixel 3 XL. I asked you, I mean, the rumors are that the reason we're getting that horrible unibrow is because we're gonna get better selfie photos. And I asked you, I mean, how much do you really care about selfies? I don't, but we had 248 comments. So now we have to calculate notch by bo notch to body ratio. <laughs> All right, you got 165 likes, dude, and I have to agree with that. Um, definitely, uh, I don't get it. Like, but here's the thing: if you notice the Pixel 2 XL, it is like the bezels on that phone are significant. Like Google has al always had ha has been a step back when it comes to design choices. So I get it that this is a possibility. It's not an ideal, definitely. I rarely take selfies, but I use my screen every day. I really, really not a fan of the notch, Rip Pixel 3. I don't think this is Rip Pixel 3. I think that there is still a market of people like me that really like a phone that provides great functionality and usefulness. The question is, how is this phone gonna age? For those of you that don't know, uh, Android P, you know, Android Pi is now official. I've been using it on the Pixel 2 XL, and there's a reason why I've stopped using that Pixel 2 XL, and it's because it's become really slow. So this is not why I would buy a made by Google product. We buy it because it is superior in the software experience and the services experience, and yet, uh, you know, it hasn't been. I say focus on better design, brother Google. I watch videos, I play games on my phone every day. I take selfies once a month. Definitely, I I don't know where Google is pushing, you know, their whole approach to design and technology. What I do want is for Google to remember the reason why they came up with the Nexus program in the first place. They came up with that because they considered that they wanted to show the world what Android, what their vision of Android was. This is the way Android phones should be and obviously the pixel became this like uh, you know extension of that to a certain degree where it's like now we're gonna officially make phones of our own that are going to embody what Google wants I agree on all that and I do agree that Google is a software company where the soft where the hardware really has to disappear into the experience the problem is when you have a notch that big that doesn't mean, yeah, the notch is gonna disappear into the software experience. It's not gonna work that way, Google. So this is the reason why I defer on the whole idea. Friends, thank you so much again for watching our videos and for your comments in the recap. If you want your comments to be featured, try to keep them short, stick to the point, and try to get some thumbs up. It helps us spot them a lot easier. You can also follow us on social media and subscribe to both our channels, English and Spanish, for more videos like this one. You can follow me on Twitter, Jaime underscore Rivera, or on Instagram at Jaime Rivera. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like what you saw. I'm Jaime Rivera. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow with more.